before this happened to me, yeah, I can be honest, I could say that I was in that category of being naive. I just, I didn't believe it. I didn't really believe it because I had to see, it's like I would have to see it with my own eyes. Grace's experience starts in the early hours of the morning travelling home with three girlfriends. Victoria, who can't be identified, was one of the women in the back seat. It's when I got um, a bit further down the hill that I noticed on the right hand side of me some long oblong shaped lights. I didn't know what they were. I mean, I only sort of caught a glimpse of a bright orange light sort of shining through. As I got down the hillside and started to come around the corner by um, this little hotel that takes us back through the back roads towards the freeway, one of the girls in the back noticed a um, very bright white light with a type of blue haze around it. When the girls were sort of saying, oh, maybe, you know, like, it's a, a UFO, and, um, you know, we sort of, like, just laughed it off and said, don't be so ridiculous. The women continue their trip, but further down the road, more lights appeared. I heard um, Victoria and one of the other girls in the back there, they were commenting on something that was behind us. They actually thought somebody was coming up behind us like a truck or something because it was moving fairly fast and very bright. It was just such a brightest blinding light. It was orange like a sunset and it was just spanning across the road. I, I got really scared and I said to Grace, quick, just step on it. because I knew there was a town just a kilometre up the road. So as we uh, got closer in, like, into the middle of this car parking area and looked up, we could see this ship. Well, that's what you'd have to call it, because it, it was you know, definitely not an aeroplane, and, um, and it, was, it was something from definitely not this world, that's for sure. It sort of moved across from this direction straight over the top of us. sort of disappeared in a, into a gully where we lost sight of it. We were scared for our safety. I mean, I, I've got to be honest, I think it's the first time in my life that um, I could identify of anybody telling me that they were scared they were going to die. Because I was. When I got to the opening of the drive here, the other girls noticed that um, there was something else up, like some activity up there in the sky. We were still scared. We didn't know what they were either. They seemed to be moving in a direction that this, this, this other craft had gone over and gone down. So the first thing you think of, just pull someone's driveway. And as I pulled in, the light was so blinding, it actually was hurting our eyes to look at it. Then I noticed a, a figure coming. It wasn't a human, it definitely was no human, that's for sure. I felt threatened by it. I felt really, really threatened by it. That was the closest thing I've ever experienced, the, th the thought of actually, you know, coming close to death, I suppose, which sounds pretty silly, but um, the fear that I had was like that. Like, I wasn't going to see my family again. And, and the weird thing is that it's, it's not the normal thing to talk about and for people to accept. But, um, you know, it's been three years now and, uh, and I still feel very distressed by it. In the weeks, um, I felt a lot of doubt with what happened to Grace. Uh, I didn't believe it, um, truly believed it, because it ha I hadn't experienced anything that my like that myself. So uh, I, uh, I, didn't want I didn't show it either. I mean, I didn't show that I didn't believe it, because I think it was important that... that I looked like I was supporting her so that otherwise, you know, she, you know, she might go sort of, you know, off the rails if, if she didn't feel she had some support from her husband. Okay. Yeah. But two weeks later, those downs disappeared. You, uh, Late one night, 